that we can click right there, and that puts us right here. We're back. <laughs> Show number three, I think. I don't know. We, we, we've done some. We're more to go. It's a great night. Dean Carlson is with me tonight. Dean, good evening. Hi, John. How are you tonight? I am doing well, doing very, very well. This is a good time of year to be doing this because in about two months, it would be so cold that maybe the internet would be frozen between us. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're going to talk weddings, and and specifically, I wanted to dig into dig into the the idea of of some of the things, the little things that we do at weddings that sometimes we just do and take them for granted. And you've kind of made it a passion of yours to know more about those parts of the wedding that we do without thinking about. I sure hope so. I mean, you know. Uh... We're professionals, right? And we should take what we do seriously. Yep. And that includes knowing why we do what we do. For sure, for sure. Now, when did you start getting kind of into into more of the history side of it? And I say history side of it, but uh, just just researching this, so you were able to use this information. You know, uh, it really ticked for me when I first took my first Marbeca workshop. Um, back in 2005, I would have to say it was. And, you know, we started talking about, you know, why do we do these things or uh, what are some of the reasons behind uh, the things that we do uh, at weddings. And uh, it opened up a whole new door uh, for me overall and how I could look at some of the interactions that I do already um, and some of the sales techniques that I can use from this also so hmm, interesting um, there's a lot of different areas that you can use this information from interesting yeah. i guess i hadn't thought about it from the sales perspective but i guess I, that would tie in if you really you really start, start thinking about it right when you were doing your research and you're you looking into this where were you pulling information from where were you going to find some of these different things um you know the first book that was recommended to me was uh, i don't know if you guys can see this book yeah. really well but it's uh it's bride's book of etiquette and uh, it's put out by bride's magazine uh actually and i'm sure they've updated it since i've gotten this copy but that was uh where i first got into the different etiquette um pieces and the whys of you know uh you know what's behind everything that we're we're doing at a wedding you know at some point, there had to have been an origin to everything that we do. Yes. And, and why is that important? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think that's, that's the key when you're looking at this sort of stuff that it's just not useful information. Well, it is useful, but I mean, it isn't just information that, you know, I know this and someday maybe if I'm on Jeopardy, I could win, <laughs> you know, uh, $20,000. Uh, yeah. What is? Yeah. But, uh, you know, it's just the idea that, uh, we're wedding experts. Mm -hmm. That's that's what we're looking at, and, and and we have a unique position in that that, that field as disc jockeys. Um, we're so all encompassing in the entire day with people. Uh, you know, it, even t in two thousand four, I bet you I, I only did probably about twenty percent ceremonies, and this year I probably did ninety ninety five percent ceremonies. Wow! You know, as far as sound goes, or even as an officiant now. Uh, which I, I, you know, married four couples this year. So, um, you know, there's different opportunities uh, for that. So, you know, if we take it from the ceremony to the end of the day, we're there all day. I mean, for sure. um, who is the bride or groom going to look to uh, for that information? The venue uh, with the food and stuff. I have a good story about food uh, that we'll cover when we get to probably the cake cutting information today. But um yeah, I mean, there's one spot that they can look to gel all of that information together, and that's us. Mm -hmm. It really is. Cool, cool. Let, let's take a little bit of a break, and then let's come back okay. and let's start talking components and talking about those traditions and different yeah. activities that we have been taking, basically kind of taking for granted. So, right. gang, we're going to have our, our sponsors for our DJ and TV. Uh, links down in the description below. So if you are looking for different aspects of what they can offer, please show the sponsors some love because without them, these things wouldn't be going on. Dean, we'll be right back here in about two minutes. Awesome.
DJ Event Planner will change the way you manage and run your business. Streamline all of your procedures and software into one easy-to-manage system. DJ Event Planner, the ultimate online planning tool. USA from RPM. Our name says it all. Get the latest hits while they're the hottest. With Top Hits USA, you'll have the track for sure. Visit TopHitsUSA.com or call 800-521-2537 and get a free demo. All right, so we've talked a little bit about where Dean found some of the information and such and the reason why he did it. Now we're going to get into the meat of it. Dean, let's let's start with one. If you could pick one aspect of a wedding that we as DJs probably don't know enough about when it comes to having a conversation with our bride, where would that be? Um, well, I mean, let's just start with the aspect of the wedding itself. I mean, where did it start? Uh, how long have we been doing weddings? Why is it important that people... Um, are getting married. I mean, nowadays, yes, it's a real personal choice, of course. And, uh, you know, but if you look back through, you know, the history of times, weddings have been going on for, you know, almost 5,000 years now in different various degrees. Well, that leads us into the conversation of, well, where did some of the traditions that we see today start happening mm-hmm. overall? And, and just before we s- start you know, the, uh, the specific traditions from today, you know, I, I wanted to mention, you know, why this is important in another realm. We talked, I, I mentioned sales a little bit ago. Yes. And if you really want to separate yourself as a, uh, a professional disc jockey, when you go into your sales meeting and if you're able to say, you know, uh, you know, why do we do these things? You know, why do we do this? Uh, and especially this will come out when I talk about the cake cutting in a few minutes here. But, you know, uh, because it's something that I can use the traditions physically with um, during the ceremony. But, you know, when you can start saying, why do the groomsmen stand on the right? Well, it was to free the sword arm because, you know, brides were being stolen all the all of the time, and uh, it was not uncommon. Why was the best man the best man? Well, because guess what? He was the best at stealing brides. <laughs> that's why. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, this not so today, but that's the truth of the thing. You know, why do we do toasts, for instance? You know, the you know the liquid uh, when you can see it actually up on. Uh, you know, some liquor stores, they'll call themselves spirits and stuff like that. Well, they used to actually put bread in a glass and it would add flavor to, you know, not so good uh, things, but uh, it would also add to, um, you know, taking away some of that alcohol from them, uh, the drink itself. So people wouldn't get as intoxicated, uh, you know, as far as that goes. Hmm. But, you know, when you start saying this to brides and grooms, when you start talking about that, they're not going to look at the DJ that's just down there that's uh, interested in, you know, oh, I can play this song for you. Yeah, you can play this song, but I know the why. Right. And the why becomes important, mm-hmm. you know. Um, I can create something out of the why, you know, of the day. I, it's some of the stuff I don't use, I'll be honest. I mean, I, I don't talk about toast. <laughs> if I'm doing a toast, ladies and gentlemen, the best man's about to give his toast. Did you know? No, I don't do that. <laughs> it's more of a sales tool there, but um, you know, it is interesting to know that stuff. Oh yeah. Uh, why do we have bouquets? Well, so let's talk about the first one. Let's talk about garter and bouquet toss first. How's sure. that? We'll start there. So bouquet in itself, you know, uh, realistically, it used to be made out of garlic <laughs> and some really strong herbs. That's Ew. that's true. Yuck. And it was there to ward off evil spirits. And, no uh, superstition there at all. <laughs> yeah, no superstition there. But, you know, it also probably bad grooms, I would guess. But um, I the, the one, the tradition that I like the best about the, the bouquet is the love, the love letter I, I talk about uh, when I'm in a meeting with people. Because you know what? People didn't know how to read and write. Yeah. You know, how did they communicate 
with each other? Well, grooms would take some flowers and he would mix them because each flower had a specific meaning and he would send those to, you know, the person that he was chasing after. Um, and that was, would be a love letter. You know, this flower meant this and this flower meant that, and it could change uh, overall. So the bouquet takes a different meaning when you look at each flower um, that's inside of the bouquet. And then, you know, it's good luck to have a bouquet at uh, a wedding. Most all of the traditions are based on either becoming affluent or fertility, <laughs> to be quite honest. There's a lot of fertility things out there. Apparently people were uh, really, really wanting to make sure that they had a hair to their uh, their family name uh, for sure. Oh, wow. Overall. But, you know, you take that with why do you toss the bouquet? You know, again, we're, we're bringing this back to the, the fact that you get to share um, your luck uh, with, uh, you know, potential maidens that are not married at that point. Um, the garter itself is a little easier um, to describe than the bouquet, I would say, because, you know, the cool thing about the garter is, it, you know, a wedding dress was in itself was considered good luck. So near the end of a reception back in, say, you know, uh, probably around the 13 to 1400s, guests would start ripping the bride's dress off. Yeah, they'd rip it off. Wow. Because if you had a piece of the dress, exactly. that meant good things for you. That meant your fortunes were going to change. Or, you know, um, when we talk about the cake cutting, you'll see how the, what, the reason why they took pieces of the cake is a little similar. But uh, so eventually brides started spending more and more money on <laughs> dresses and didn't want to ruin them uh, overall. But they came up with, you know, throwing the bouquet and throwing the garter at that point to stop them destroying uh, the, you know, the wedding dress uh, overall. I was impressed to find out that the actual first um, wedding dress overall was uh, by one of the queens of England, uh, Anne, I believe it was. Uh, and she was the first one to wear white. And that was actually not as far back as you might think uh, in the 1700s. Mm. Yeah. So this is why we do that, you know. And then uh, how do you use that? Well, it isn't something necessarily that you're going to say. But I have this theory, and I could be wrong. But uh, I think uh, – I don't want to say bad DJs. I, I think that we have – lost some of the tradition of marriage, you know, and, you know, there's a lot of DJs saying, oh, we don't want to do the garter or the bouquet toss anymore because it's become the shtick, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, what I see now really honestly is brides don't necessarily want grooms to go up their dresses to grab the garter, uh, yeah. uh, in general. And that's a valid, uh, thing, but you can still throw the garter and bouquet it still has value when you talk to a bride and groom and you tell them these things like this is why we did this. This is the reasoning behind this. Now the guests may not get all of that point. You know, they may look at it and, you know, start saying to themselves, Oh, well, if I catch the bouquet, I'm the next person, that, you know, to get married. You know, that's a real recent tradition that was added to it. Probably, you know, as, as early as the, you know, early 1900s uh, overall, but it, it, when you tell somebody that it all of a sudden has new meaning, mm -hmm. right? For sure. To them. And then you can still do that. And what you do with that is, you know, specifically up to you as a DJ on uh, how you want to make that special for each bride and groom. But at least, you know, that there was a purpose at some point for this. Mm -hmm. And it's not just, um, so that we can have five minutes off of from playing music or uh, this thing, you know, you can develop something, uh, you know, pretty uh, spectacular out of that. I think overall, mm -hmm. for sure. So yeah, interesting. The I, the bride dress, I had no idea. Oh yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, rip the dress. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, take a hunk of the dress. And... Yeah, yeah, oh, no crazy. Okay, let's see. We've got about about nine, eight, nine minutes left. So, okay, where do we where are we heading next? Let's just uh, let's go right into the cake cutting because this is where you're really going to see the most application to uh, your shows. I think in general. I mean, it's important to know the other things uh, overall, but uh, how you can utilize those things is uh, really a lot different uh, than say the cake 
uh, cutting. And again, I want to go back to the fact that I think that we are partly responsible for the loss of some of the traditions as DJs. I, I just, I believe it with every fiber in me. And the cake cutting is a prime example of that. You know, for years, and I was responsible too. I, I'll take the, my end of this story. But, you know, it, it, the, the thing is, we would go, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to do the cake cutting now. Please bring your cameras on over as Bob and Mary cut the cake. Yep. Play sugar, sugar, right? That's the cake cutting. Yeah. And, you know, what meaning does that have? So brides and grooms are spending, uh, you know, thousands of dollars on photographers, okay, to take a picture of a cake that they used to spend eight to $900 on, not anymore, right? Mm -hmm. And the reason it's disappearing from our show is the reason we're going to cupcakes or, uh, you know, shoot, I had a cookie two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. cookie. It was cool, though. I, I, it was totally them. So, actually, if you look at the history of the cake cutting, you can see that they used pies and stuff back then, too. But, but we have lost that moment. You know, we have, we're not making it significant for people. And, you know, it, it just takes looking at the history of things, uh, you, you know, to do that. And, and these are things that you can bring to life to guests because they don't know, you know, uh, they don't know for, uh, you know, they don't know that it was good luck for brides and grooms to have a cake at their wedding. Uh, they don't know that, uh, let me get to my notes here, that, um, you know, they used to stack the wedding cake up, uh, up and up and up, and the bride and groom used to kiss over that. And depending on how high they would kiss would uh, really base how much, um, uh, you know, how much uh, fortune and stuff that they would have or what kind of marriage that they would have. And that led to actually an inventor, a, a French baker, inventing frosting in the 1800s to build up cakes, you know, to keep them fresh. And they could build those cakes higher and higher. Mm -hmm. Shoot, I saw a cake, a picture of a cake. This was really disturbing, though. <laughs> Some lady in Texas actually had a cake made of herself. I was like, whoa, that's just too wrong in so many different <laughs> levels. The groom cutting into the cake. What? Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Just, I mean, but I mean, when I talk about the cake cutting at a wedding, I talk about, you know, hey, here we are. We've got Bob and Mary here, and they're about, they're ready to cut the cake. Did you know that, uh, you know, that the cake cutting was really a significant thing? And it's important for them to, um, you know, have this and share this with you at a wedding back in ancient times or in antiquity or Roman times or whenever you want to uh, talk about, uh, you know, if you had cake, it meant you're going to be off because wheat was something that was not common. And that's what they made all the cakes with before they were sugary cakes um, that they developed into in probably the 1800s uh, overall. Um, but, and then there was the superstitious parts. Those were the fun ones. And this is where the cake smashing comes from. The groom would literally, well, actually the bride would be the one that would cut the cake all the time. And then when, as cakes got bigger and bigger, eventually she had to say it was okay for the groom to help. But eventually he started crumbling cake over the bride's head. That would make her very fertile. <laughs> they would have lots of children. But so knowing this, okay, say, so let's take that for instance, just that part, right? If you, and, and I do say that at my weddings. I literally say that, you know, but when you're doing a planning meeting with a bride and groom, you have to ask the question, can you have kids? Because mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> you know, if they can't have kids and you say that, it's a bad, bad deal. That would be a bad deal. And you know what that leads to? Every single time the room laughs. They do. They think that's hilarious, but it, it leads, it led to the smashing of the cake, you know, uh, eventually um, they changed from that. I don't know. It was like, heck no, we're not having babies or whatever. Yeah. I don't know. You know I, have I no want idea. babies. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But we want lots of babies and they're going to be messy, but uh, you know, so all of those things can be pulled together and you can create this wonderful moment for people. You know, you can narrate the cake cutting, you know, you can talk about the steps for the people that can't see in the background. And when I started doing, using some of the history of the cake cutting and stuff like that, um, 
literally at every wedding that I did, I, I would have no fewer than three other couples that would come up to me afterward and say, that was the coolest thing. I did not know that. Yeah. Because people were interested, you know, um, used in the right spot, people will be interested and you can utilize it as a tool. You know, um, you take the slicing of the cake, you know, that was really the first joint activity that a bride and groom got to do together. That, so that's where that came from. Hmm. You know, that's why they sliced into the cake. So a lot of great reasonings uh, involved with the cake cutting. And, and I utilize it every single week um, for sure. And it gives me a leg up. Yeah. You know, um, through the Marbecca classes, by the way, and here's a shameless plug for that. You'll learn how to do a ceremony with that uh, and work really specifically on that uh, overall and how to utilize that as a tool uh, in general. Um, you know, what intros you should use, what body and what extra, um, whether you want to use all of that or not. But um, you can really learn a lot from those classes. And I think they have a few openings still uh, in Vegas this year. So check yeah. into it. Neat. Shameless plug. <laughs> no, but it's good. That's for there's times where people are like, well, where can I go to learn more about different aspects of what we do? And the Marbecca is probably one of the premier educational resources yeah. out there in the DJ industry right now. It's it's cool. I uh, I saw I, I saw an interview on Good Morning America about two weeks ago with um, they were interv Bon Jovi must have a new album out and so the, the three original members that are still in there obviously Richie Sambor is not there but uh, the bass player said something pretty interesting to me and he said that um, how what would you reckon. Uh, Michael Straham said, asked, what would you recommend to uh, people that want to become rock gods? Mm -hmm. And the bass player said, he says, you know what? You have to continue to practice daily. <laughs> you have to love your instrument and you have to continue to take instruction. That's what he said. They've sold 230 million albums and he continues to do that. Um, I'm entering my 28th year of DJing this year. I just started that. I'm pretty stoked. October's yeah, nice. anniversary. Congratulations, and, yeah. Uh, I'm spending this year, I sp spent probably close to five grand on education, you know, because um, of this sort of stuff. Yeah. This is what's going to separate me uh, from other people. And the education stuff is out there. Uh, I'm looking at uh, jumping into Peter uh, and Liz's stuff this year. I haven't done any stuff with them yet, so I'm kind of excited to possibly do that this yeah. year with them. But um, there's there's things out there. We can find them, and we can do them, and we can uh, better our craft, and we can learn, and we can become the expert that our our clients expect us to be. Yeah, great stuff. Good stuff. Dean, yeah. if someone would like to get in touch with you, where can they go to catch up with you? Um, sure, you can email me at dean at nightmagicproductions.com. That's my company name. I'm also on Facebook, so dig around uh, on John's page. You'll find me there. Feel free to, to do that. Uh, last time I did a seminar, somebody uh, Facebooked me afterwards in Iowa, and I had a show in Iowa this year, and we, they did a ride along with me. So Very cool. I, I take people with me all the time. Um, you know, if you want to come along sometime, I'd be happy to do that too. So good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah. Well, we're gonna wrap things up gang. Uh, we'll have Ben Stowe here in about five minutes. I'll put the link for the show in the chat room here in just a second. Uh, Dean, I want to thank you for coming on tonight and, uh, sharing some great information. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. There we go. The chat it's in there. So we'll see you guys in about five minutes. Mm -hmm.